Let's talk a little bit about fructose and how this impacts your brain. Even though your brain, it weighs only three pounds, it's still the body's biggest utilizer of energy, consuming 20% of all the glucose floating around in your bloodstream at any given moment. But what does the brain do with the fructose? Let's say you eat sugar. That sugar molecule, it's sucrose. It's a disaccharide that has two monosaccharides. One of those monosaccharides is glucose. The other monosaccharide is fructose. High fructose corn syrup is composed of a mixture of individual glucose and fructose molecules. Regardless, whether you're consuming sucrose or high fructose corn syrup, it goes down into the intestines, it gets absorbed there, and is delivered to the liver. Fructose is metabolized in the liver, and one of the byproducts is uric acid, which then travels out of the liver and makes its way to the brain, where it leads to microscopic inflammation, and more inflammation means more oxidative stress. The more oxidative stress that you have in cells, the sicker they become, sometimes to the point of causing cellular death. But if you overwhelm the liver's sugar capacity, let's say you eat a donut or you go to Starbucks and you down a venti frappe with extra syrup, well, guess what happens? Then a sizable portion of that fructose load actually makes its way out of the liver. In essence, it spills over into the bloodstream and then it makes its way to the brain. And now that fructose is gonna directly impact the brain. And if you thought what uric acid did was bad to the brain, Check this out. Fructose alters brain metabolism in a few key ways. One is actually what it does to the astrocytes, the cells that nourish the neurons. Specifically, fructose does something called glycation and oxidative stress. Glycation is essentially the sugar molecule combining with the amino acid portion of a protein, which leads to the formation of ages, advanced glycolated end products, which is what ages you. The glycation process is also known as the Maillard reaction. It's also known as caramelization or browning. Both glucose and and fructose cause glycation, but fructose does it seven times the rate of glucose. Basically, your brain becomes caramelized if you eat too much fructose. So in that sense, you kind of are what you eat. Fructose generates 100 times the number of oxygen radicals compared with glucose, and all of this means oxidative stress. This oxidative stress means that the mitochondria, they become sicker, and eventually, they become dysfunctional. When these mitochondria start failing at their job, the cells start to die off. And if that's not bad enough, fructose also messes with two trophic growth factors that help the brain develop and organize connections, leptin and BDNF, brain-derived neurotrophic factor. You could think of these two proteins as fertilizer or like miracle grow that allows our neurons to break off the old branches and form new ones. Fructose, because it induces insulin resistance and causes high insulin levels, it ends up impairing leptin's ability to do its job, and so this leads to cognitive deficits or cognitive impairments. Now, you may or may not know that beta-hydroxybutyrate is the ketone that is generated either from exercise or intermittent fasting or from a ketogenic diet, and beta-hydroxybutyrate actually increases BDNF activity, which helps lay down new connections in the hippocampus. The hippocampus is the memory center of our brain, and it's also the first part of the brain that deteriorates in Alzheimer's. As it turns out, fructose is impairs BDNF activity. And interestingly enough, there are various studies that have showed that exercise, a ketogenic diet, intermittent fasting, and eating unprocessed food all been linked with a decreased risk of Alzheimer's. This is why when you look at the blue zones of the world where people live the longest, healthiest lives, like in Japan, Italy, Greece, Costa Rica, and Loma Linda, California, what do they all have in common? They eat mostly unprocessed food with very little sugar in their diet. They're also physically active and have good social relationships, a good sense of community. And when you take a look at the map of the United States and you see which states have the highest rates of diabetes, most of them are in the south, the southeast, and the Appalachian area. And these also happen to be the states with the highest rates of obesity. And these states, for the most part, have the highest rates of Alzheimer's. So what is the common thread between type 2 diabetes, obesity, and Alzheimer's? Too much sugar. Insulin resistance. 